through the ages, the Manipuris had developed a distinct martial art form known as Thang Ta. In the course of history, the people of this tiny kingdom could defeat the armies of Burma and neighboring countries by the culture of this art. The name of Thang Ta exponent, Pauna Bezabasi, who sacrificed his life in the anglo manipuri War of 1891 is still remembered with reverence by the people of Manipur. The kingdom was annexed to the British after that battle of 1891 and the practice of this art was banned and the possession of swords and spears was liable to harsh punishment of death and exile. But Thangta survived through the secret schools of masters or ojas. Deep value of sacrifice, chivalry and honor. Respect for life of all statures. Proper safeguard of women and children. Morality and truth are some of the ethical practices associated with the martial art tradition. Oja Ningthou Kongjam Khelchandra explains the use of different parts of Thangsang, short, chungoi, burglar, and firep stands. And demonstrates the use of back edge of the deep portion of the sword. One rare speciality of the Manipuri shortsman sif is the ability to deliver multiple strokes in a single footstep. Thang Chungkoi Marol Haiba is the basic sword yielding exercise holding sword and sill along with advanced footwork pattern for a perfect coordination of handwork and footwork. Oza Sinam Devabharta explains the Ta, spear. Ta is a weapon used by the people of Manipur since antiquity. Ta can be advantageously used in thrusting man and animal alike with either end. Kausaba is of ritual importance. There are nine different styles of Ta Kausaba. Its style consists of specific sequences like the salutation, removing of stakes, watching of the foe, or the battle, the hunt and the stroke.
Kwak Hau Saba was compulsorily performed on the occasion of Kwak Tanba Festival in the month of Mera, the English month of October. For the first feeding of the Maite child with solid food, a ritual called Chawumba is performed. The well-dressed and ornamented child is kept on a mat. In front of the child, different materials like petty, clay, gold, silver coins, books and weapons are spread. The first material touched with his hand is read as a sign for his future livelihood. If the child happened to touch the sword and the seal, it is believed that the child will be a warrior in his future life. The training of Thangka begins with the lations on Thangbi, short vocabularies. It is the technique of delivering hits, cuts or thrust by the swordsman to the vital limbs of his adversary. Thangbi may be divided into two. Yanbagi Thangbi, attacking techniques, and Ngakbagi Thangbi, defensive techniques. Along with these strokes, a number of footworks for attack and defense are practiced, which are known as Yanbagi Konglon, way of the foot while attacking and Ngakpagi Konglon, way of the foot while defending. Chairol Mapi Haiba, stick exercise of the beginners, is a basic form of exercise for the young learners to develop the wrist and arms as well as the footworks. These basic exercises groom the young learners to become proficient enough to handle the steel blades. These are Sajil Kanglon exercises in order to develop balance, flexibility, agility, endurance and coordination. The mastery of these exercises enables the practitioner to be completely aware of the inner realities of physical and mental self and encourages him to achieve self-confidence. systems of the Thanglon, the art of short play has been in practice. One is Laiting Thang, decorative short play, and the other is Yana Thang, combat system. Laiting Thang was mainly used for exhibitions before the kings and the nobles of the court on special occasions like Kwak Tanba and other festivals like Lai Harauba. 
For Lai Teng Thang, two shots or a shot with a burglar could be yielded in such a way that the entire body is protected from all sides. One important feature of Lai Teng Thang is that the two shots yielded by the performer should never clash. Some of the steppings used in the process are Thunga Nungdum, triangular, Tha Machet, semicircular, Kong Pham Manga, five steps. Another typical feature of lighting Thang is that composed duels like Thang Yanaba, short fight, Thang Ta Chainaba, short and spear fight based on basic exercises of the thang ta. The other technique, yana thang, freestyle combat technique, is practiced with the weapon chai di. Chai B is a short can stick split into four sections and wrapped up with loosely swanned leather sheet. This free fighting is one of the most important training system in Thang Ta. Here the fights are not composed nor they follow established vocabulary. Different weapons are used for different purposes. This is Lambuta, a long spear used for capturing or killing tigers. Khangningta, tapak, and long are some of the different types of spear. These swords are known as Salai Thang, swords of seven clans of the Maitais, namely Angom, Ningtaucha, Luang, Kabanganba, Kuman, Moirang, and Sarang Laisangthem. Some of the sacred swords believed to be yielded by different guardian deities of the Maitais are shown here. Then, bow and arrow were commonly used by the Manipuris. Sairong is also an indigenous weapon of the Manipuris. This is the quiver of Arambai, another traditional and much dreaded unique weapon used by the Manipuris bought in aggression and defense. It is a kind of dard made of peacock feather fastened with a piece of pointed iron which is already tempered with poison. The Arambai was used to be thrown from the horse back by the Manipuri cavalry. An expert equestrian could throw this weapon very effectively to all the angles, forward, backward and sideways even from beneath the twilap of his mount to inflict a fatal injury to the enemies.
Through the centuries, the Manipuris smelted iron from the iron ore available in Manipur, mainly at Kakching. The weapons were indigenously made out from that smelted iron. The Maitais believe that the weapon have evolved from the limbs and bones of Ting Sidaba, the Eternal One, and consequently they are treated with reverence. The villain heroes who had successfully fought many battles and captured ferocious wild animals were amply rewarded by the king of Manipur. Manafi is one such specially made cloth for the purpose of the reward. Pajeng Firal, made of rare bird feather and small flags are also decorated on the turbans of those competent ones. The Manipuris not only attained higher skills in the use of weaponry, but also developed a special technique of unarmed combat known as Sarit Sarat. Sarit literally means evading or defense from an armed or unarmed attack, while Sarat means counter-offensive moves to hurt the attacker whatever the situation be. Offense is defense is the basic principle of this art. Mukna is a must during Lai Harauba, the biggest festival of the Maitais. There are different laws or techniques used in the Mukna. Some of them are Kaplak Kotti, Chepching, Longkro. Those who practice Thangta have to follow strict rules of conduct and moral ethics. The capturing or killing of an animal or a foe must be carried out with strict code of conduct having moral values. For instance, a foe who pleads biting a piece of grass or one who pleads with folded hands should not be killed. Capturing of birds like Nongobi, Wakambong, Mongba, Tebet, Langmai are also forbidden. It is believed that capturing or killing an animal or a foe against a prescribed court of conduct brings about havoc or destruction to the capturer, killer or his descendants. 
Manipuri martial art culture involves the study and invocation of different elements. A specific area of study is the reading of signs of the clouds known as Lichen Lawn. For instance, if the cloud assumes the form of a lion facing the enemy in the battlefield, it is sure that the battle will be won. Thangta of the Manipuris is not simply the ability to yield weapons, to fight with physical strength and skill. The art includes deep spiritual exercises which enables the martial man to cope with other forces beyond human knowledge and comprehension. The training in Thangta will not be complete without the knowledge of the sacred Tengo. This art is imparted only to a student who is over 40 years of age and also one who can control his mind. Thengo is the ritual of summoning the spirits of the eternal world to balance the equilibrium of the universe with the esoteric martial movement from which the language of the short and spear originates. It is believed that the Tengo is performed on the coils of Pakhangba, the eternal serpent god, and thus violation of set norms of Tengo was considered as sacrilege. Oh, 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 oh. 